What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be doing something a little different, but I feel like it's gonna be super helpful. A lot of engineers can crush it on the technical interview, but when it comes to the behavioral part, that's where a lot of people struggle. And I know candidates who did great on the technical interview, but they got a rejection because they failed on the behavioral part. They weren't able to demonstrate that they had proficient communication skills or how well they handle certain situations. And that's what the behavioral interview gauges for, because you can be a technical genius, but if you can't convey what you're trying to say, it's gonna be hard to work on a team. And I'll be the first to admit it, I'm not great at just thinking of examples right on the spot. So usually how I prepare for an interview and how well I do on it, usually have a direct correlation. So before going into an interview where I know I'll be asked situational questions, I'll usually brainstorm and think of about eight to 10 examples from my career that can be used to answer different styles of questions. Anything from conflict management to a time where I made a good technical suggestion, because a lot of times you can mold your situations to what the question is asking. And what I've noticed is that the best answers usually have a story behind it. Obviously, you don't want to add too much fluff to your answer or diverge away too far from what the question is asking. But if you can kind of paint a picture of the solution to your interviewer, that usually leads to better results. So in this video, I'm going to give myself a few prompts and answer them as if this were a real interview. Before we get into the video, make sure you guys hit the like button so I know you guys like this kind of video and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more. So the first question is going to be, tell me about yourself. This is the question that most behavioral interviews start with. Now, it's important to mention that even though these are behavioral interviews, they're, they're, they will still have some technical aspects to them. So let's take a look at how I answered this question. Hey, my name is Sam. I'm a software engineer and I enjoy solving complex problems. I have experience as a full stack web app developer and I enjoy working with all layers of the stack and I enjoy building out user-friendly, efficient websites. My passion for web app development started when I was doing my internship at AWS and I was given a solo project to work on for the entirety of the internship. And this really gave me full ownership over everything from the design decisions to the actual coding of it. And I was also able to gain a lot of experience and exposure to different uh, AWS cloud computing tools. After my internship, I decided that this is what I wanted to do as a career. And since then, I've gained about three years of experience building out dozens of different applications. At my current company, I'm helping out with the modernization of our existing infrastructure. This includes building out new microservices as well as updating existing ones. The technologies I've experienced with include .NET for building out APIs and our server side code. SQL with uh, MySQL, Oracle, and SQL Server, as well as experience with different various JavaScript frameworks, including Vue.js and Angular. So I believe my experience and my passion would make me a great asset for your company. So in my answer, I tried to keep it short and sweet. I didn't get into my whole life story, even though it is a tell me about yourself. Keep it relevant. Don't start talking about your dog or something. You guys think I'm joking, but I've actually heard people say that when I've been in group interviews. And I would say a sweet spot for this question would be a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. Uh, again, that isn't set in stone. These are these are kind of like more like guidelines, right? Have you ever seen Pirates of the Caribbean, right? These aren't rules. They're more like guidelines. All right, the next question is going to be, tell me about a time you had to persuade someone at work. What did you do? Let's take a look at my response. At my previous company, our team supported 20 to 30 different web applications. And there was really no uniformity in terms of what front-end JavaScript framework we could or should use. So what ended up happening is we would have some apps written in Angular, some apps written in React, some written in Vue. It was, it was kind of all over the place. And the problem with this was, say you were assigned to write a feature in a certain app and you didn't really know that framework, you would have to at least you know, spend time getting a basic understanding of it before you can even start to implement that feature. So this potentially increased the development time by a lot. So my proposal was to just have all our apps be written in Vue.js uh, because it's something that I had experience with. Um, I think I thought it was fairly easy to pick up. It's a lightweight app um, and you know, it's pretty easy to inject into existing applications. 
So what I did was I created a little like mini demo presentation um, and I set up a meeting between my team and my manager and just demonstrated the pros and cons of using that framework. So the result of that was my manager was on board and we decided to use Vue.js for all our new development. Again, that was about a minute and a half to answer it, and it was told like a story. I explained what the problem was and what I did to resolve that problem and showed how I made a lasting positive impact to the company. All right, the last question we're gonna look at is, tell me about a time you failed at work and what did you learn from it? So this one time I was assigned the task of implementing a new feature into one of our applications. And we use Git as our source control. So as I was working on this feature, I was continuously pushing to our master branch, which isn't good practice because you always want to keep your master branch uh, deployable as well as in sync with what's in production. Also, if we deployed this app with this feature being partially done, it would break the application. But this, this was an app that barely ever got updated, so I figured I'd be all right. But of course, we had an emergency bug fix that had to be made. And uh, I was like, we actually can't deploy it because the app is going to break. <laughs> Luckily, um, with source control, you are able to go back and we were able to add that change to where I started working on the feature. But in the future, I learned that in order to, you know, if I wasn't making any changes, first create a branch off of master and deploy to that branch. And then when you're finally done with the feature, then merge the changes back into master. Now, a potential issue to this answer is that it assumes that the interviewer knows how Git works. Most likely you're gonna be doing one of these interviews with another dev, so, I mean, they probably know how Git works, but it's possible that they don't. But I think a really important thing to answering these questions is that you don't wanna confuse your interviewer by going too into the weeds with a particular technology that they might not know. So just gauge who you're interviewing with. It's, it's very easy to get very technical about something and, and totally lose your interviewer. And that's not good because it means you weren't able to clearly communicate a technical topic, which is important when you're working with other devs on a team. All right, so the takeaways from this video are keep your answers about one to three minutes long. The best answers usually tell a story. Usually there's a problem or a situation and you talk about an, an action that you took to help resolve that situation. And finally, don't confuse your interviewer. A lot of times your answers might include a very complex technical subject that your interviewer isn't going to understand in a two minute explanation. So just be aware of that and, and even simplify your answer if you need to. All right guys, thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, if you guys would like me to do another one of these, uh, definitely let me know. And if you have a specific question that you want me to answer in one of these videos, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll try to include it if, if I end up doing another one. So I will see you guys in the next one and as always, Keep on coding.